All right, guys, strap in today because I'm going to share with you some shit. I'm going to tell you about what it was like to work in a real boiler room as a stockbroker. So let me set the scene for you. It was mid-2000s. I was just graduating college. I was living two blocks outside of Detroit City. The firm I worked for, they recruited heavily at my college. They would get young, ambitious kids to work for them. They'd promise them the world. I remember when I interviewed, they told me in the interview, in three years, you'll be making 150 grand. And I thought, that's amazing. And I actually said in the interview, will you give me the tools I need to make that money? They said, absolutely. I said, great, oh, I'm, I'm in. So a couple of days later, they called me like, hey, you got the job. I was like, excellent, all right. So let me tell you where I was in my life. I, was, I just graduated college, didn't really have any money. Um, started here, it was basically, it was in finance, they have a draw system. So it's usually two grand a month and any commission you make goes to that draw. So you pay off the two grand first and then whatever's left over your two grand, if you made more than two grand a commission, then you'd get that as well. So it was basically a hundred percent commission. Okay. So you could hit the draw, hit the draw, but if you're not making commission, um, they're going to fire you eventually or find a reason to fire you. So <clears throat> I was just out of college living right outside Metro Detroit in a shitty little apartment with my friend who was doing heroin. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, I was never into drugs, but I was drinking a lot. Um, and we had some girls that lived above us. We actually ended up banging them. So that was pretty fun. We'd always have parties over, but um, over at our place. So we had some good times over there. Um, but this job really consumed me and I stopped going out and I started partying less. And I got in a really shitty place, a lot of stress from this job as well. So let me get into it and explain to you. This boiler room was way north of Detroit. It took me almost an hour to drive there every single morning. On the drive there, I would stop at the 7-Eleven and get a garbage breakfast every single morning. So I'd start the morning like a loser already. I'd get there. 8 a.m., we'd have a meeting. 8 a.m., the meeting would be us, the rookies, and the 26-year-old manager. Now, this manager was a real piece of garbage. I'll tell stories about him later. I might have to chop this up and make this two videos because it's going to be long. So 8 a.m., we'd generally read an article. Sometimes it'd be finance-related. Sometimes it wouldn't be. I remember we read this one article about chaos in New York City. And the manager was like, how does this relate to us, guys? How does this relate? It's like, I don't know, man. You know, what are you talking about? And he was like, well, when you're not hitting your sales goals, when you're not booking meetings, when you're not passing your financial tests, this is how you guys are in complete chaos. We're like, great lesson. Thanks a lot. This, this is wonderful. Okay, good way to start the day. So we'd have a stupid bullshit meeting in the morning, 8 a.m. 9 o'clock, we'd start studying because most of us were unlicensed. We'd study from 9 to 12, just reading our Series 7 book, reading, reading, taking practice quizzes. The goal was to get 90% on the practice quiz, then we're ready to sit for the real exam. So 9 to 12, <clears throat> and then lunch would come, 12 o'clock. We would have to eat there. So whether you brought your lunch, most people didn't, or you'd go out to the liquor store down the street and buy a slice of pizza or a sandwich, and a monster to drink. Just garbage food, day in and day out. Plus, we all smoked then. So we'd eat garbage, we'd go out in the back and smoke. It was so disgusting. So now let's get into the really difficult and nerve-wracking part, the cold calling. One o'clock would be in the pit cold calling. Cold calling houses, it was all old ladies and immigrants because this is right when the do not call list came out, when George Bush Jr. Uh, passed that law. So we're just call, cold calling, calling and calling. And remember these old phones? These are the old phones we used. And you know, we'd have the phone 
on our shoulder and be dialing. It's like, hey, this is Dan with some shitty firm you never heard of. And then we'd have to explain the firm and then we'd try to get them to come in. I actually did book a couple meetings and got people to come in for financial meetings. But it was so difficult and we were unlicensed. So if anyone challenged us, we were told to say, well, we work with a senior broker. We're calling on behalf of him. I mean, this was illegal what was going on. And we're just calling and calling. So I want to get back to the calling in a minute, but let me finish my day here. So we would call from roughly one o'clock to four or five in the afternoon. And then no one would go home at five o'clock. This was a 12 hour job, five days a week and then half a day on Saturday. So at four or five o'clock, we'd have another sales meeting. And it was never anything like this is how you analyze a stock or this is how you put together a portfolio. It was just sales training. And we were, again, we were taught to lie. All right, if somebody challenges you on the phone, what do you say? Oh, I'm working with a senior broker. And it was just so unethical and illegal. So we would also be told to promote the firm because no one knew what this firm was. So we have to say, oh, the firm, we just did this. We advertised on this. They advertised on uh, a race car, actually, and mentioned the race car, mentioned this. So we were taught about the firm. We had sales training about the firm, how it was formed, why it was formed, what great things we do. It was a cult. It was so odd and just mind-blowing. So then... Six o'clock, we get back on the phone, six to nine, we dial. And this is prime time dialing, guys. Dialing for dollars. Just hitting it hard, just boom, boom, boom. And a lot of people, you know, we'd interrupt their dinners. Who cares? But the manager would walk up and down the sales pit and just make sure we're calling. Just make sure we're calling. And I remember one day, no one was booking meetings. No one was booking meetings. He was getting pissed. He's like, all right, everybody stop calling. Stand up. We'd all stand up. He took our chairs, threw them all in a corner, pulled them out, put them in the middle of the room. He said, nobody can sit until you book a fucking meeting tonight. And we're like, oh, shit. All right. And he's like, what? Get back to calling. It's like, all right. So we're calling, we're calling, we're booking meetings, we're trying to book meetings. And finally, somebody books a meeting. It wasn't me. Somebody books one. He's like, yeah, just book one. Here's the time, blah, blah, blah. He's like, all right, good job. See, Johnny did it over here. Why don't all you guys do that? Sit down. So we finally got to sit, finish our calling. And cold calling in America is only allowed from 9 to 9, 12 hours a day. So nine o'clock, phones went down. Sometimes we'd have a very brief meeting, what we did right, what we did wrong, and then we left. And I'd drive almost an hour home and just chain smoke the whole way home. Just so unhealthy, mentally, physically, it was horrible. So I am so glad I'm out of there. Just thinking of this just gives me a horrible feeling. I have a ton of more stories I wanna share with you guys. I'm going to put this in two parts. I don't want this to go too long. But these boiler rooms, they still exist, but in a much different structure. And there are much fewer of them across America. But these were just so unethical. And the way they treated us was just horrible. We were just numbers to them. And hey, look, I get it. I'm in business too. I understand. But they went about it totally wrong just treating us like absolute garbage. So the next video I'm going to make, I'm going to tell you what we had the clients invest in and just some more stories about working there and the horrible management they had in place. So I hope you get some entertainment out of this, guys. It's all true. No bullshit. Let me know what you think below. Thanks.